Welcome to another exciting video on the fossil record. My name is Benjamin Berger and this week, while I'm filming here in the United States, it is late November and the Thanksgiving feast will soon be upon us. So I thought that I would talk about the fossil record of turkeys. Turkeys are one of North America's largest wild game birds, which has provided food for its native inhabitants for more than 12 millennia. The Aztecs named the bird Guadahoade, which is a term still used in much of Mexico and the American Southwest. The English term turkey was first used in England before America, when domesticated North American birds were sold in English markets by Turkish traders beginning in the 1550s. The traders obtained their birds from Portuguese and Spanish ports, where they called the bird Peru instead, as these traders obtained the birds from ships returning from the Americas. However, turkeys are not known to occur in either Peru or Turkey. By branding the bird turkey, it implied to the customers in the English markets that the birds came from the glamorous Ottoman Empire and in many European countries it is still referred to as a bird from India, associated with exotic spices, yummy Indian food, rather than the culinary cuisine of the Aztecs. When large numbers of English settlers arrived in North America from England in the 17th and 18th centuries following the English Civil War, they brought with them the Old World Turkey terminology for the bird, rather than adopting the native term, Guadahoate. Hence today, most English speakers call the bird a turkey. To avoid all of this confusion, the scientific name for turkey is Meleagris. There are two living species of Meleagris, Galapravus, which is the common North American bird in domesticated turkey, and the closely related, more rare species, Meleagris oxalate, which is found on the Yucatan Peninsula. The domestication of Melograis Gaviapov, likely occurred in Teotihuacan, the Aztec capital in present-day Mexico City, where the bird is known to range in the wild. By 300 BC to 100 AD, the Mayans in the Yucatan Peninsula imported the domestic breed, which we know from uh, dated leftover turkey bones at archaeological sites in Guatemala. Domestic turkeys likely were traded north as well during this time, out of central Mexico throughout the Uto Aztecian tribes, which include many of the native tribes in the western United States, including the Ute and Hopi tribes, where they became a staple of the diet to many Americans living at the time. However, wild species are still hunted and many never have been domesticated in much of North America. In fact, numerous fossils of turkeys have been found in North America prior to the arrival of humans. The Pleistocene tar pits in Southern California, where saber-toothed cats and dire wolf fossils are abundant, so too are fossils of turkeys, which are placed in the fossil species Melagreus californica. In fact, Melagreus Californica is one of the best known fossil turkeys, with multiple complete skeletons known. The genus Melagreus extends back into the Pliocene epoch about 5 million years ago, with fossil turkeys known in Texas from isolated bones. The famous Thomas Farm Pantological Site in Florida, which is dated to around 18 million years old, or early Hemiphordian of the Miocene epoch, features fossilized remains of a tiny turkey called Ren Minornis. All these fossils indicate that during the Neogene, turkeys were endemic to North America. Molecular phylogenies of living birds are somewhat contrary, but agree in indicating that turkeys are within a monophyletic branch of birds called the Phasinaeidae, which includes grouse, pheasants, chickens, peacocks, partridges, and quail. This group has a fossil record that extends back to the Oligocene, 
with a remarkable fossil from Germany called Paleornix, which was a quail-sized bird with a rather long turkey-like neck. Members of the Facinaeidae were mostly known from Europe, Africa, and Asia, and it is thought that turkeys split off this group and entered into North America during the Oligocene, likely as an ancestor to both North American grouse and turkeys. However, there are a number of remarkable Eocene fossils from North America of more ancestral forms. This is Galeonoidoides, Wyomingensis, which is about 50 million years old from the Green River Formation of Southern Wyoming. It's a controversial early Galeiform bird and features a set of traits seen in both chickens and turkeys. The furcula, or wishbone, has a nice keel, which you will find in your Thanksgiving dinner today. The keeled sternum has this large crest, or bony ridge, which gave this bird large breast muscles. The neck is fairly long, with long legs with splayed toes, indicating that this fossil bird was similar to modern grouse, which tend to stay on the ground and only use wings for flight in bursts, such as escaping from predators. One of the interesting things about this fossil is the presence of darkened spots on the crest of the prepared skull seen in one specimen, which resemble a comb. Although researchers have not mentioned this feature in their descriptions, combs are a characteristic trait found in later chickens and other galeiform birds. Other galeiform birds are known from the Eocene of North America, such as the fossil Amtia antabia from the Bridger Formation of Wyoming, which features similar anatomy to modern grouse that live today. We can extend the fossil record of turkeys and chickens to at least about 55 million years ago. But are there fossils beyond this time period which connect turkeys with the age of dinosaurs? 66 million years ago. Fossil birds in the Paleocene of the late Cretaceous are really kind of rare, and this might be because most were very small. The time period was also where ducks and turkeys split, as many of the fossils from this period of time exhibit similarities with ducks, or the Ansiaform group. Um, these late Mesozoic fossils are often only recognized as gallo Essenian birds, since they are likely ancestral to both turkeys and ducks. One of the survivors of the end Cretaceous extinction was the Prispaornidae, a group of fossils which had long necks and legs, but a duck-like head with a wide bill. This lineage likely split off from small Galeocenian birds, which were much smaller in the earlier Cretaceous. One little-known Cretaceous bird is Paleotropus from the Campanian and Mastrictian of North America, a possible early Galeiform bird only known from the coracoid and scapular elements. The fossil coracoid, a shoulder bone in birds, features a cup-like scapular facet, a primitive trait shared with ducks. The coracoid is more advanced from an anornis and other small tooth birds from the earlier Cretaceous period, with a longer, more robust acrocoracoid process at the end. Galeasterian birds in the Cretaceous period are likely basal neognathid birds, which are recognized as having more, a more mobile palate, with a pterygoid palatine joint in the roof of the mouth and reduced vulmar bone. Now, since these traits require well-preserved fossilized skulls to diagnose, most fossils in the Cretaceous are ascribed to the group based on fragmentary postcranial bones instead. It was during the early Cretaceous and late Jurassic periods that we begin to see the anatomical relationship showing ancestry with small theropod dinosaurs called the avula, including the mother of all birds, Archaeopteryx. 
The origin of birds from small theropod dinosaurs is discussed in some of my previous lectures. But for a quick summary, uh, we see the loss of the bony tail and the origin of the pygiostyle, or tailbone, the development of a keeled sternum, and the fusion of the hip bone into the robust syn sacrum, which is the complex alien looking bone that you will find in the back of your turkey dinner as well as the fusion of the three finger bones into the carpo metacarpus uh, wing bone. Um, and we also see the loss of teeth. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I hope that you enjoy your Thanksgiving dinner this year or partake in the exotic cuisine of the Aztecs. Guadahoete. I wanna thank my Eohippus patrons, Brian Clever, Pablo Luzato Figuez, Arctotis, Arctotis, 1811, Justin Bovie, and my Trilobite supporters for encouraging me to make these fun extra videos in the fossil record. If you'd like to support this video, check out the link below.